I saw that referendum doing and the work that went on there was groups of people gathering together to fight for proper recognition of their peoples as entities and themselves as instruments of their own self-determination in the future. And uh, so it was all voluntary work by the people involved. We were just the workers. You just went and did it, you know, <laughs> whatever way you could. And you cleaned and you washed and you done driving and done the whole bit. Probably the happiest days of our lives. The people at the health service got together and uh, designed a curriculum. Without the Victorian Aboriginal Health Service, the gym, I don't think we would have got up. We need more people. Uh, uh, I don't know much say, we've got plenty of uh, educated people, but we need them to go the right way to, to show people that are sharing and caring and, you know, and, and reaching out and helping somebody. You know, in the traditional sense, this is, um, this is the way that our people um, have always been, you know, to take responsibility for these uh, fairly major events. That we have achieved a lot. Yeah. You know? I can't speak enough about Telson. I think that everybody should do a course on the history of this service. I think this service has not just been concerned with Aboriginal health, it's been concerned with the politics and living. Long before the white man came, our people never lived in shame. We took what we needed from the land. Worship Mother Earth, the clouds we thank. But when the endeavor report which came back from Lake Torias with Hillis and uh, it was on the, uh, it was devastating, you know, the, the problems that they had and there didn't seem to be anyone who cared and originally we were uh, members, uh, executive members of the National Council of Aboriginal and Island Women and the women were very um, dedicated and very strong. The original place which we had in Gertrude Street was uh, a disused uh, building which derelicts had been using and it was in appalling condition. And uh, so it was all voluntary work by the people involved. The first nurse, I believe, was uh, Claire Garrison and I believe Jan Chessels was also involved. And uh, we also had uh, Auntie Edna, who used to always be present in the back with a cup of tea for people and a chat. There were a number of uh, uh, doctors who don donated their time. They came in for a meeting and of course they were told that this isn't going to be a cup of tea and cake, you know, and bye-bye sort of thing. If they were going to become involved, then we wanted commitment from them. And we wanted to see outcomes from their involvement. And, um, uh, you know, as well, they were very supportive. I believe that uh, we have to start being more uh, pro-assertive, um, about our health needs and about our health service delivery and looking into the future. They tell me who gonna keep the fire and who gonna keep all the culture alive and who gonna keep the fire burning? as a nurse uh, and at that time we, we, we didn't have what we call parkies. We had the men and women that used to frequent the Collingwood, Fitzroy, Carlton area. So I started off uh, in the bio by introducing these people to what I should say a vitamin B injection in the morning at nine o'clock before everybody started. And then um, 
coming from New South Wales, they started to get to know me and I started to have uh, plenty of contacts with what they call uh, the parkies now. Some of the boys and I took time off and went to different factories and got off cuts, mainly leather. And we started to do uh, programs in, at the health service for some of these men. We were able to, uh, to service the elderly and uh, the people. We always had uh, like breakfast or tea or maybe lunch when eventually, um, eventually we um, trained seven Koori tutors in different areas. Once Gertrude Street went, I think the whole issue of being together, sharing and caring fell apart. We need more people. To, uh, I don't know how much say, we've got plenty of uh, educated people, but we need them to go the right way to, to show people that are sharing and caring and, you know, and, and reaching out and helping somebody. You know, I, I, I frequent the park, I go three times a day, you know, a week, sorry, I go three times a week. If I see somebody they need, I just pick them up and take them back to the house, but it's supposed to be the, uh, just for drug and alcohol, but, you know, I take them back and feed them and clean them up because it's, you know, once you're down, you're down, and I mean, if you can't go and shower or things like that, it, it builds up, you know, and then you become a parky, then you become a hermit, and, and nobody wants to know you. They walk the other way instead of saying, look, come on, and we'll do this and do that, give you something to eat, and, and it's just not going anymore, and I hope that eventually some of the young ones will take it up, especially with the parkies. In uh, 1974, essentially, the health service had been operating for several months, and uh, there was recognition within the health service of a need for a dental service. I had helping me then Maureen Austin, Jan Chessels, Claire Garrisso, uh, and they were instrumental in giving me entree to the houses of Koori people in country Victoria, where we very clearly established grave needs oh, with respect to dental health. So tell me how to do three areas. Uh, Warrnambool, Shepparton, Goulburn Valley and Gippsland. We done Warrnambool and they gave us some money. Mm. But I had to go with Bill because I had a nursing certificate, a number. So I went to Bill, we, we travelled around. We just started off, we got an urgent call, Bill rang up, we got an urgent call to go to Framingham. But uh, Banjo's brother had a toothache. Mm. When we got there the next morning, he said, oh, too late, you fellas are too late. He said, I brought it out last night, the flyers. <laughs> Ultimately, uh, we received funding for that service and I was privileged to be asked to be the first dentist. And ours was the initial dental service around Australia for Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Services. Um, and we also went on to have uh, the first male dental attendance in any dental service throughout Australia. There's, there's just so many people that have been associated in the struggle for the health service to maintain itself against forces within government and forces within your bureaucracy which wish to bring it down or wish to control it uh, in a, in a non-Aboriginal fashion. The initiative was people themselves taking action about their own lives to a degree that certainly doesn't happen in the non-Aboriginal community uh, and showing their abilities, their innate uh, strength to be able to meet their own needs and not be dependent on handouts from white governments. Their struggle has gone from nothing in terms of resources except the people themselves to one in which they have established organisations of world standard uh, in delivering healthcare, in delivering education, in delivering childcare, and which has changed the policies of Australian governments, despite those governments not wanting to change. The Fitzroy Stars Aboriginal Community Youth Club Gymnasium was founded by uh, my father, Jock Austin, as well as uh, the support he had from his brother, John Longfellow Austin. And that came about when they approached the Victorian Aboriginal Health Service for some support to attain a building and also minimal operating costs. Uh, at the time, Dad and Uncle Longfellow basically worked voluntary. 
the programs there were mainly just uh, social type activities where young people could come in, play a game of pool, play some video machines, and um, definitely if they like, do some physical activity as well. And 99 George Street is where programs really started to kick off. Um, we commenced a lot of uh, junior football teams, basketball, cricket, volleyball, basically the sports that um, people approached us to uh, set up. A number of champions come through the facility and uh, that includes local crews that have won Victorian and Australian titles, right through to Graham Brooks that won a, a Commonwealth title, Baby Cassius was Commonwealth champion. 1988 when we moved across to the, uh, the new building, a three-storey building in Gertrude Street at uh, 184. And um, yeah, things just sort of blossom from there. Um, Dana Goodson has developed a kickboxing program there and, and that includes young people from as young as uh, six years old. All the staff at the gym that's ever been employed there always appreciated that the health service was the mother organisation of the, the gym. But in particular, I'd like to um, just thank the people that uh, supported my father, Jock Austin and Longfellow, people like Alma Thorpe, Bruce McGuinness, Dr Roberts. You know, it, from my recollection, uh, we're, we're there at the forefront supporting and uh, having the arguments with government that we needed this uh, essential facility. We keep the ball in motion, just like the rolling ocean. All blacks play the game. In about 1978, I was in, involved in, um, in sort of a, a nutrition program and um, I was asked by the Administrator of the Health Service at that time to um, run a day, one day a week, to, to attract, um, well, to attract women and their, their young children where a day that they could come to learn about nutrition, give them lunch and um, some fruit and to have a, um, a GP there. We talked about Yapra, how we'd like to have our own childcare centre run by Koori people, and that developed a few years after that. If everyone remembers 136, we had a small kitchen, and in that back room, that was the under fives room, where they had the scales and a length board. Mothers and fathers would bring their children in to get basically way. The reason why Neetan 2K program originally started off was basically because um, Koori families would not take their children to see local GPs or go to public hospitals because they felt so uncomfortable. They felt that they were just a number and not a person. They felt that going to a Koori organisation or Koori Control Health Service that they could feel that they are, are getting treated properly and they would come back if they needed more treatment. The programs which come out of the Need Time 2K are um, the alternative birthing, survival screening, breast screening, child maternal health nurse, paediatrician and the Koori Kids Mental Health Network. And these were all developed through the hard work of, of everyone involved in the Need Time 2K women's and children's area. I could remember children 15 of 10, 10 to 12 years ago that they all had snotty noses and they had sore ears. Well, today, you don't see that now. Uh, gastro was a very bad, bad infection, but that, that has all cleared up now. Um, if you could just basically see the improvement of children, how, how, they've, um, how their health has improved since, since the under five began. <laughs> Aboriginal health workers are seen as the key link between uh, uh, a Western medical model and the, and the philosophy of Aboriginal community controlled health, where they play an important role in the delivery of health services to Koori people. Up until we started the health worker education program, there was no formal training for Aboriginal people to be able to do health worker education. So the people at the health service got together and uh, designed a curriculum and uh, put together the first 
uh, Aboriginal Health Awareness course for Victoria. It went for about eight years, and over that time we graduated about 130 health workers to be reasonable, to be uh, responsible, and to be rational. Um, quite simply, I mean, the words speak for themselves, and we thought if a health worker could follow them three hours, they would be uh, quite good at what they were striving to do. One of the more pleasing aspects about Currie College was we had a lot of students from Victoria, and them students from Victoria were picked by their local community. They just didn't pick themselves. They were picked by their community to come down and learn health and go back and work in their community. And that was very important because then they, were, they felt like the skills that they were getting were going to be used. The strongest message that I have got from people who, who set it up and people who have participated is about our concept of health. And quite simply, it isn't a Western concept. Now, if I've got a sore arm, you come and I, come to a, I go to a doctor and they patch it up. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm a well person. There are other parts of my well-being which need to be tended to as well. My emotional well-being, my spiritual well-being, my cultural well-being, uh, my family, my community, my tribe, and the land, which is important to me as well. And for health, for us, must encompass all them type of things. And when they're, when they're all in place and done right, then we can start to consider ourselves a healthy group of people. I think everybody should give a big hand for the health worker students that graduated today. Okay? Give them a big hand because they really deserved it. It's one of the best programs going in, in the whole of this country for our Aboriginal people. Around this time, 1982, Koori Information Centre was set up. 1989, health service workers received award wages. Also in that year, Dr Ian Anderson became the first Aboriginal graduate of medicine at Melbourne Uni. In 1990 at 3CR, Koori Radio was established. But the funerals, Aboriginal funeral, um funeral fund which which um, for the last you know 10 15 years has been operated by Arnie Edna Brown in in conjunction with other elders but uh, but that had been operating from way back in the 60s. Mum started out on her own with people, a couple of people in Victoria and going to the pub, cleaning the neighbours to help them clean the pub and that sort of thing. Well, you have to have the money up front to do it. Or you can be buried. That was the reason Mum members go and to look for people and they were getting buried sports. Yeah. Yeah. And that was before the health service started. Then Mum was involved in, in um, the elders. Funeral funds? Yeah, the funeral service came out of it. Because we used to carry bodies in the back of our vans. You mean buried in the back of his station wagon? Yeah. My uh, full-time involvement in the funeral service began around February of 1990. Up until that time, the Aboriginal Funeral Service, as it had become known over a couple of years, was the creation of uh, the late Stuart Murray. And Stuart was a uh, pretty special sort of a person. He was a, he was a warrior who, who saw a need to assist Aboriginal people with uh, funerals, as there are, there are a large number of deaths uh, in the Aboriginal community. Around about 80, 1987, Stuart uh, 
acquired uh, some funds to purchase a, uh, a new vehicle and he commenced to upgrade and, uh, and, and move the Aboriginal funeral service into another mode. There was a, the demand being placed on the funeral service was increasing all the time. Uh, there were extraordinary numbers of deaths from a whole range of uh, causes. There were times, you know, where like, you know, 10 people would die at once, you know. And, you know, there is a great need and the great need will always need to be uh, carried out. But at the same time, the great need is to prevent our people from dying. You know, my obligation will have to reach now into, into trying to save some of these lives which are savable, particularly these, these kids on the streets with drugs and, and, and whatnot, those sorts of problems. And we buried a lot of those kids. And uh, so although there's a, you know, there will always be a need for the, um, for the Aboriginal funeral service, let's hope not a, not a great need. You know, let's hope that that need drops off and that there, there is no great need that, uh, that the funeral service can just be a little auxiliary function of an organisation that, that takes on a responsibility when need be and hopefully they're, you know, they are very old people that we buried, very and not children. And three, three, don't you go away It's written in the land so many and cree, cree, don't you ever die There's so much for us to learn together Elmer said to me one day, and Lucy said, uh, uh, how do you feel about uh, Aboriginal Affairs? He fed him about Aboriginal Affairs. Yeah, I said, yeah. She said, would you be interested in coming on to that service? I said, yeah. But as a member of the NAC, I said, I'd, I'd consider it a, a, an honour. So uh, I, I decided to come on the board, or the community decided that I could be on the board. As well as being founding members of the community, I was also a patient. I was also a client of, of the Aboriginal Health Service. Uh, three years ago, I was really ill, and I died in hospital. They brought me back in hospital. But as a health service, it took me there. If I hadn't gone to the health service, I wouldn't be around today. I think at one stage, 38 years of age was a long longevity of a male Aboriginal, an urban male Aboriginal, 38 years of age. Now, I'll be 60 this year, and I think I owe 30 of those years, not just the years that's been around, to the Aboriginal Health Service or the concept of the Aboriginal Health Service. Uh, it's a pity that younger people don't have that experience firsthand. I say a pity because it's really important to them to understand what went before. Because we, if you've got no history, there's no present, there's no present, there's no future. I think the uh, health service is a great thing. I still think it's a great thing. I don't think it should be too, become too clinical. It should maintain its grassroots. It should maintain its contact with Aboriginal people. It should be run by Aboriginal people, community Aboriginal people. You know, people come into the community from other places they have to serve an apprenticeship. They have to put the time in and they have to earn the trust and the respect of the community and the community likewise has to earn their trust and respect. You just don't come in one day and expect it to be laid out in the plate in front of you. It just doesn't happen that way. 25 years ago, some elders decided that our people needed a meeting place where we could come and be united. So like animals are drawn to waterholes, the people began to come, gathering together like honey ants for there was much work to be done. They fought for self-determination to make decisions on their own, but soon it was more than just a meeting place. For many, it was home. Slowly, as the years passed by, it began to take on shape, triumph and tribulation lying in its wake. Changing camps, a new beginning, though many hearts have cried, for the dedicated community people who have left the camp or died. Good times are still celebrated, our times still take their toll, but the people have kept walking on to newfound waterholes. But we used to worry about the, the, the alcoholics, but now, you know, I can see it worse now because you've got the drug And yes, it's, it's, drug it's a lot heavier, so, and, and, you know, it's a different destroyer of health. And there's a lot more suicides. You've never seen suicides, you know, like you do in these days. You've never seen that sort of thing. 
you're just lucky to make 30 to live, you know, the men. I think it needs to be on the gone young. into a bit more with the young people. That's why they're dying in their 30, 29. Well, maybe the message is to the young, if you don't keep living, there's not going to be, you know, like no Aboriginal community, no Aboriginal people anymore. No. It's the young that we rely on now. You know, it's not, not my age. It's the youth of the day, you know. And the responsibilities they have to one another. It's very serious. Yeah, young people just going on. Killing themselves. Never live, really. Then I suppose we can say, well, is that part of the process of the, the um, oppression of our people? So, you know, that's, that would be my thoughts. It's continued, as I say, continued genocide on, on the um, Aboriginal people. You've got to keep on surviving to start off with. You can't destroy yourself. Yeah. If they get through to, you know, like the other you have to work at that, I think, for the young people. There's too many young people are. Hope you agree that the story's right. Join together to win.